Um, I don't do this for a living. I, I specify, I design, so please bear with me. <laughs> and I'll try and make it as, as fluid as possible. If I can go the right way. OK, so this is me. Excellent. Right. So um, yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, I tend an allotment, really passionate about being outside. Uh, we keep chickens, fresh eggs are fantastic. Um, I spend a lot of time outdoors, as you can see. So I'm a keen fly fisherman, got into tying my own flies, loads of extracurricular activities. The stuff comes off the allotment, goes into the kitchen, love to cook and like to think I'm quite good at it as well. Um, I go climbing a lot I'm, um, and bouldering. I'm a qualified route setter, so actually putting holds on the walls, you know, making things nice and interesting for the people coming along to climb. Quite creative as well. Um, and I'm also renovating a um, Victorian terraced house. So, you know, every spare hour I'm, I'm, I'm finding a different job to do. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, I've got uh, obviously nearly 20 years of experience uh, in, in the industry. So um, uh, an interesting balance. So um, the MBS, where, where do I come into this? Well, um, I started uh, interacting with the MBS uh, a long time ago when we were, when I was on the advisory panel for MBS Create, which was precursor to, um, to Chorus. Um, I've helped with the links between the 3D software and getting that specification information actually into those systems. I've done various uh, webinars with Stephen as well over the years and obviously I'm, I'm stood up here today um, extolling the virtues of specification writing. So um, when Stephen asked me to do this presentation I was like well how, how do I pitch it, where do I go with this? So what I wanted to do with this slide was just give you an idea of what, what my day might look like. So you know um, I've got a project to deliver but I'm, I'm doing lots and lots of things. So I'm talking to the client, looking at fees and appointments. We're doing briefings, researching products. We're doing site visits. Um, I'm also looking at the design, thinking about the specification, building the model, the aesthetics, the precedence. Um, as architects, we do like cake, by the way. Um, so that's always welcome. <laughs> um, we're dealing with statutory bodies, so we're thinking about building control and, and the planning side of things. And also, more recently, obviously, the Building Safety Act coming through. So there's, there's lots and lots of stuff going on in my day. And I want to do my job as well as I can every day. So why do we use um, Chorus? Well, I've actually pulled this quotation direct from the MBS website. I couldn't have written it any better myself. So I'm not going to read it out, but um, there are obviously some key points highlighted below it. So the cloud-based nature of Chorus is, is fantastic. We, we are Mac users, so we, we do have issues you know, with, with software compatibility, etc. cetera. Um, it's smarter and safer, so I've seen the product, the, the, the specification tool develop over the years, and it's, it's, it's incredible to use now. So um, it's collaborative. You know, we can, as Stephen's already mentioned, we can get you manufacturers involved in our specifications. We can write them together. We can have multiple people working on a specification at the same time, um, which is also really, really helpful for big projects. We're connecting our workflows, so we're linking the specification into the model and annotating the model using that specification tool. It's quick, there's no doubt about that, and it uses less resource. And the, the other point I wanted to make about this is, is it's so easy to use that um, I actually got a part one to write some specification the other day, and, and the part one architecture is, is very green, you're coming out of university, you don't know much about anything, but actually uh, this, this part one student was able to write a specification and write it very well for given her experience uh, using the chorus tool. So that's that's one of the reasons, well, those are the reasons we use it. But also, you know, uh, the elements below. We're looking at the Building Safety Act, building control, 
the, the specification feeds into all of those elements within the projects that we're delivering. Okay, so um, I was also thinking about, you know, giving you an idea of when when we start the specification, and I'm a big um, uh, fan of getting the specification started at the very beginning of a project. You know, even if we don't really know what we're going to be designing, get that specification set up. And then as soon as you get to put pen to paper, you can, you can start to add systems in. So we're looking at kind of stage one, stage two. We might be designing a, a student accommodation building. We know it's going to be um, brick external leaf and an SFS um, uh, kind of uh, system underneath. So get those systems in, you know, and, and then start your specification in earnest. And then as the project develops, we start to um, obviously increase the level of detail that Dale was talking about earlier on, uh, building um, the, the kind of the systems up, um, talking about installation requirements, really nailing down the products that we want to use. And then when we roll into stage five, obviously, you know, this is what we're, we're, we're using to build on site. Um, we've got detailed execution clauses, um, you know, and, and support from, from the MBS with references, etc. And then that finally ends up um, within the building O&M manuals. Um, obviously, there's, there's questions around uh, who, who updates that, but I think that will certainly become more prevalent now uh, the Building Safety Act's on, uh, in force. And then at the top of the bottom, I just thought it was worth highlighting that um, there are some, some things that really uh, help us within our day-to-day -day, um, workflow. So uh, the top one, the MBS in the background, continuously checking and updating the information and alerting us when changes are made so that we can review those changes and ensure that our specifications are as up-to-date as they possibly can be. And then at the bottom, we're able to publish our documentation, our specifications, are able to track the changes. So there's no, no longer any con, um, confusion over when something was in, when something was out. It's all there, it's all tracked, it's highlighted in red and green, um, whether it's been amended um, and, and those types of things. So hopefully some of you are wondering, well, why did he share all that information about himself at the very outset of this presentation? Well. I just thought it'd be interesting because I'm a big believer in managing the work-life balance. So, you know, I've got a lot of stuff going on outside of work. I really enjoy my time outside of work, as I'm sure we all do. But if I can do my job quickly and effectively, I'm both more valuable to my company and I also in get to enjoy more of my time outside of work because I've completed the tasks that I need to do faster than anybody else. So that's why there was that initial overshare. So, um, okay, so um, when I'm writing a specification, um, this is what I don't want to see. No products available, my heart sinks. Ah, oh, you know, now I've got to, um, I've got to go to the, the websites, I've got to trawl through the manufacturer's information. It's laborious, um, often it's out of date. Um, and it can be really frustrating trying to get that specification information into Chorus. So on the right hand side, obviously, when, when I see um, a great big long list of manufacturers information and products come up, um, I know that I can be quick and effective in, in writing my specification. Um, in terms of flexibility, the product variants are all in there, managed by the MBS, so I can I've got drop downs that I can select from. And as well for architects, it's visually pleasing. You know, it looks good. Um, and those are the types of things that, you know, we, we want to be delivering. You're putting a specification in front of a client. It looks as though it's been thought about. It's, um, you know, uh, it's got everything. It's got the bells and whistles. So, you know, when it comes to product specification, the right hand side is definitely going to make my day. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm um, going to do just, just have a look at a, a couple of quick examples. And these are recent examples. Um, 
when I was talking to Stephen about this, we, we were thinking about um, examples that we'd used in other presentations, but actually we're working on so many jobs that they're flowing through and you come across these examples uh, quite regularly. So um, on, the, on the screen there, we, what we've got is um, it's a really low carbon uh, timber frame building. Um, it's a cadet training center in a field in Lincolnshire. So, you know, really, really kind of minimal carbon, all the things that we're, we're, we're trying to push as architects. And what I came across was a boundary condition. So we got two, a store building and a, a kind of main ancillary building side by side, and we're trying to comply with building control regulations. Um, I need a product that um, gives me uh, 60 minutes fire rating and has been tested against um, a timber frame construction, has a BBA certificate and all of the other technical data alongside it. And I searched long and hard on the internet to try and find um, one of those products. You know, went to the, the BG website, Cineat website, not a single thing. But dropping into MBS Source, the, the, the board product that you can see there came up, um, you know, all of the product information, the data, the BBA certificates were all there. A quick phone call to the manufacturer just to ensure that, you know, do my due diligence. It had been tested. Fantastic. It's in the spec. We're moving forward, you know, done and dusted really quickly because the manufacturer had spent the time, put the information in there, um, and I was able to specify it. Quite simple. So, what does MBS Source give us? Well, it gives us all of the supporting information that you know we're looking for when it comes to writing our specifications. So, um, you know the BBA certificate I've already touched on, but as you can see there, there was a, a raft of supporting information um, with that product as well, which gives us confidence that you know uh, the products that we're specifying are the right ones, and we can download that and have that in our folders. Um, you know again, as, as, as supporting evidence. And as Stephen's already touched on, the, cop the copy and paste functionality is brilliant, it's quick and it's, it's, quick and it's efficient. Okay, um, so another little example here. Uh, this is slightly different. This is um, a, a project that I'm working on for Rolls-Royce currently. So um, it's very new, it's um, a, a different type of architecture for me. Uh, industrial and um, what we're looking for is essentially a clean room. I've never designed a clean room before, didn't really know much about it so I'm having to do the research and then I'm also looking for products to put into this clean room and we are having to comply with um, Rolls-Royce um, rules and regulations, the red book, fire ratings, that type of thing. So when it came to specifying this clean room window I'm typing in clean room window and there is a clean room window. Um, hopefully the, the sharp eyed amongst you will have noticed that um, uh, the window as it's specified there is actually a 60 minute window, not a 120 minute window. So there is a little bit of um, an annoyance there when products have the title that says one thing, but actually we're specifying something else. So um, it, it does co cause confusion on site, but it's ju that's just a little bit of a, a niggle on my side. So again, we're, we're using uh, Chorus to find products, to specify products and add those into our specification. But in this instance, um, what we're also doing, as uh, Stephen touched on, is we're adding that specification information to the model elements so that when we're scheduling out those elements, the specification is attached is attached to that model element, ensuring that as we move forward, if, if that specification changes, somebody has to actively go in and change those elements and change the data um, so that the, um, that information flows through from whenever it's added to, to completion and handover. Um, okay, and finally, I'm a, Doing for time, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, from my point of view, generally more likely to specify a product if it's 
in MBS source, if it's in that panel on the right hand side, it's quick and it's efficient. You know, it makes my job easier. I know that the information's looked after by the MBS. And that all of the supporting information's there, you know, looking towards the, the, the building, um, building Safety Act, we're still trying to work out what it means for us as architects. You know, how are we going to deal with that? Who's going to do that within our practice? Is that a service we're going to offer? But all of this supporting information will need to be there to um, obviously carry out, allow us to carry out that role. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs>